Hi, oh, I'd like to show you something sad but instructional. This is a, a very bad attack of apple scab on um, a variety called um, Kids Orange Red. This is a very good variety, it's one I uh, highly recommend. It's very good flavour, similar flavour to uh, Coxis Orange Pippin but much easier to grow. But it is susceptible to scab, which doesn't merely, it's a fungal disease, it doesn't merely look ugly, it deforms the apple and it causes splits to occur which will allow rot to get in. So the apple's gonna, like it's gonna rot, it's gonna fall off, it's never gonna reach maturity. I mean, frankly, this is, uh, this is beyond, you know, cosmetic. This is a disaster. And um, we're gonna get a very poor crop uh, from these trees. Uh, we uh, do spray fungicide, but this year we did not get enough on at the right time uh, for reasons too boring to go into, mainly to do with time constraints. Um, but here's a tree next to it, and all of the kids' orange red trees in that row are in a bad way. Uh, but this is a variety, a much older variety, it's been grown for at least 300 years, um, called Adam's Pearmain. And this is well flavoured apple. Maybe I prefer the taste of kids' orange red, but this is a very well flavoured apple. It's a long keeping apple, and it has a lot of natural resistance to scab. Um, so this has had exactly the same treatment, it's on the same rootstock, it's in the same soil, it's going next to the others. But I can't really find any scab on this at all. Whereas if we go to the next tree in the row, which is a, um, a kids, again we've got quite a lot of um, apple scab. You know, it's not in a good way. And um, most of the rest of the trees in the show are similarly affected. We're going to get a crop off of here, um, but I'm going to be working my way through here, removing um, these apples because they will never come to any good unfortunately I mean if it was very close to the uh, to season of ripeness I might uh, tolerate a few trees like this they could be crushed for juice or cider uh, but obviously these will um, I mean, you wouldn't take these to a market store you know whatever Joni Mitchell sang uh, but uh, just across here again there's another uh, apple which has had exactly the same treatment, same soil, same rootstock, same microclimate, but uh, of course the same season. But again, I can't really see a lot of scab here. This is uh, another very old variety, another old European apple, probably French, maybe Dutch, we don't know, called Orleans Renette, which is uh, one of the best tasting apples there is, one of the best flavoured apples that you can find anywhere. The French cook with it and the French whatever anyone thinks about the French, and I love them, um, the French do know a good thing to eat when they find it. And although this is an eating apple, a dessert apple, it's also the most popular um, cooking apple in France. They cook it with all sorts of dishes, sweets and um, salads they do it with, and uh, pork and chicken dishes. So, again, it's not a fluke. I just can't find any of these that are badly affected by a scab. So, um, uh, two points there, when you're planting your backyard orchard, particularly if you don't want to spray, and who am I to criticise you for not wanting to spray? I mean, we have to really, because we're selling tons of apples for the market. Um, but you'll want to consider the genetics. Some apple varieties are much more resistant to the nasty fungal disease called apple scab than others. And uh, there are some varieties like Spartan, for example, Red Pippin is another, Cox's Orange Pippin is another, uh, which are very, very susceptible. They've got an Achilles heel for scab. They will probably get scab unless you spray them with fungicide regularly. Um, so if you really don't want to spray, you need to check it out. Uh, varieties like Adam's Pearmain, um, and to some extent also this um, uh, Orleans Renette, other varieties. Uh, think about uh, susceptibility to scab and um, the other thing to think about is it's very important to keep the genetics of these old apples alive uh, because it's possible through breeding whether ordinary skillfully directed um, plant breeding or whether using um, uh, genetic modification technology which I don't have a problem with although some people do uh, to take uh, disease resistance genes from apples which naturally have them and put them into apples which don't have them uh, may be a very good thing for everybody uh, in the future. Anyway, happily growing. The biggest mistake is not to plant an apple tree. Um, but if you plant an apple tree that's very susceptible to scab, you may have more trouble than uh, if you plant one that's got natural resistance. So it's worth doing your research.